Hello everyone, welcome back to GK Code Labs. In this video, let's discuss some crucial points in data security strategies. We usually ignore uh, the data security aspects uh, when uh, we process the big data, especially in Spark. But in this video, we'll be talking about few of the categories of uh, data security and uh, what strategies we follow especially when it comes to PII data. PII, if you don't know, that's uh, personally identifiable information. Any information in the data that can personally uh, link back to a person's particular identity. That can be somehow your email, your um, in India, you can say as Aadhaar card number or your phone number. So those uh, are considered to be sensitive data. And once we uh, get these kind of data in our data sets, we should be very conscious while processing them into our data pipelines. In this, first of all, we'll discuss about the strategies that we can follow for data security. Also, uh, with a little bit of uh, Spark and Scala code, how we can implement them. Overall scenario, uh, we'll discuss in this. Actually, this is also a domain while processing your big data. This should be somewhere on the back of your head while handling this kind of secure data. So when it comes to PII data security, any company that is handling some personal data of any customer or user depending upon in which area the company is few laws like gdpr ccpa they uh, get applied to uh, any company handling your data so for that uh, data security side of thing we can apply few strategies like pseudonymization and anonymization what are they and why do we actually need to um, implement them We'll see that with examples that are being seen in the data set that we process in our Spark and Scala code. We'll see a few techniques that are used for pseudonymization and anonymization. In anonymization, basically we can have some strategies like suppression and generalization. We'll see all of them uh, once we uh, scroll through the data and we'll see how what, what picture it takes once we apply these kind of strategies and why they are important. Generalization is also of uh, a few subcategories, category generalization, binning, rounding. So the overall picture you can keep in mind, but let's see the code and as the data moves, we'll discuss about all these strategies. So this is a simple Scala code that I have written and I just I have put some breakpoints so that I can demo in one complete run itself. So let's say we have uh, an input data, something like this. Okay, we have first name, last name, email, phone, Aadhaar number and country. We'll consider this as a, in an Indian scenario. If you are seeing from non-Indian country, you can consider this as SSN as well. Now see, first name, last name is still fine. But data like email ID or phone number or Aadhaar number, these can be uh, PIIs because they can directly link back to, in this case, Rohan Sharma, correct? So in such cases, what generally uh, we think is why don't we encrypt this right uh, we can have the encrypted copy of it and then in this data will be uh, not visible to anyone right let's quickly see i'll move it and i'll hash this data so if i continue i can get output something like this first name last name intact email id i get a complete hash phone number as well as other number now my PII are completely encrypted. But this kind of, first of all, this kind of strategy if we implement, this can come under pseudonymization. There are more things to it, but uh, this kind of category comes under pseudonymization. Why? We have given a pseudo name to pseudo value, you can say, to the email ID of Rohan Sharma. Similarly, pseudo um, ID to phone number of Rohan Sharma, right? But this might be useful in some cases if we um, don't directly need them. But uh, this is not the only thing that we can do, right? What if uh, we have a UI, we have a user interface where Rohan Sharma, if he logs in, we actually don't want to leak this email ID, but for his login um, page on the top on his profile, we might need to show this, right? So it's not like we just input the data and we just completely hash it and it goes out of the way. We cannot do that. Although his PII has got uh, uh, indistinguishable now, but this is not completely okay. In that case, another uh, type of pseudonymization that we can do is tokenization. This was just simple hashing, but we can also do tokenization. 
process will be almost same but we can have a key value pair something like this i'll continue the program so if you see the tokenized data tokenized data looked something similar to that we have uh, used the hash function i'll quickly show you this is the hash function that i have written using the uh, message digest and this is a sha 256 hash okay and i have created a udf same udf i am using to hash these email id phone and other and after this we can have a token key value data where we can keep a key value of rohan sharma's email and its token so this can be the token and it can directly be saved along with the email id of rohan sharma similarly his Aadhaar number along with the token and phone number along with the token. Now, important thing to note here is that this also, first of all, comes under the pseudonymization. But according to data security, pseudonymization can also be, these values can also be PIIs because they are directly linking back to specific values. But when it comes to data modeling and how you handle them this kind of uh, key value data this is stored in a different tier of your storage or with a uh, different access privileges that only a specific application which has keys to uh, the data lake or uh, table where this key value is stored only that can access but for every other public this will be visible so in that case this helps in data security to a greater level but make sure this is just one strategy and pseudonymization can pseudonymize data or token data can also be considered as a PII. But you can see here the level of security is at least better than uh, saving them directly. So this sort of strategy is hashing tokenization. These are called as pseudonymization, okay, where we can save the token data whenever we need it. We can join them and with the proper uh, access privileges and then retrieve the actual value now coming to anonymization as i told anonymization can be done by suppression or generalization so this uh, anonymization technique this is basically used uh, to uh, retain your data where it's not available where it's not needed most of the cases where the data goes for data analytics team or business analytics so or dashboards where maybe entire data is not required for uh, the type of analysis that they are doing for example let me continue with this let's say we have a data which has some salaries as well okay let's say it has same first name last name email phone salary and employee feedback as well as the base locations now so let's say we have some analysis to be done something like the average salaries of uh, let's say any base location or grouped by the base location and some analytics team wants to uh, analyze it now do you think this entire data needs to be visible there for those analysis no right in that case at max we need salary and base locations or name uh, if if required so in that case such things uh, if we present this entire data set and make it available to um, our analytics team there are highly chances of that uh, pii to get leaked right so in that case we can do some suppression on the data something like this let's say uh, we get first name we avoid the last name as well salary or even the first name as well we can completely ignore and uh, base location now for our that particular uh, analysis i guess this data is more than enough because we just needed to analyze uh, basic or average salaries or maximum minimum salaries based upon the base location right now in spark or uh, any uh, data processing doing this is very simple people who know spark uh, they um, are very well aware of it but this session is particularly for you to make understand that how important this is in terms of data security so let's suppose anytime soon this requirement comes uh, to you you should be well aware that it's not just reading the data and processing or doing some transformation it's about what data needs to go to which layer because now you need to be uh, aware about the sec data security as well so when for the analysis the pii's are not required and maybe analysis team is uh, also the part of the same company and data is in the same company but how we save the data should be uh, designed very thoughtfully that we only provide the data which is required at what level or maybe we can create a view out of this table as well which gives only these three columns 
right so such kind of technique is called the suppression which comes under the anonymization now another thing as i told there is one uh, strategy that is generalization let's say we have to provide the analysis based upon how um, someone is feeling right we already have uh, feedbacks from our employee here now we can anyways use a machine learning model which can predict the mood out of uh, any given statement let's say i love the collaborative atmosphere here this mostly sounds positive here i uh, let's say the workload can be overwhelming at times this sort of sounds negative and meetings are scheduled regularly to keep everyone on this project so sort of neutral so there can be different tactics which can be implemented here to sense the mood of it but in that case although it's not a pii but uh, we don't leak the actual feedback or actual comment of rohan sharma right it's not correct like someone provided this feedback we don't leak the actual information so in that case um, we can sense the mood out of it and uh, let's say we process a generalized data out of it so base location and mood let's say so any given date we say bangalore positive hyderabad positive neutral negative now for sensing some overall uh, statistics about the mood on a given let's say year end or appraisals this much data is enough and how we achieved this uh, the kind of uh, strategy that we apply here is anonymization now you see how uh, with those transformations as of now for a new data engineer this might be given you given to you as a use case but this overall strategies at the end provide us the data security to a greater level and what kind of data security what category of it that uh, you can see here so this kind of uh, strategy uh, comes under the anonymization this is generalization there can be many more some uh, strategy like uh, there is one strategy uh, for anonymization that is called binning so binning is something like where we don't provide the actual let's say there was uh, no first name here and uh, but there were actual salaries till the decimal uh, precision so in that case we can also give a range somewhere about 121k so it's uh, we can give a range about 100k to 125k some ranges so uh, we can describe different uh, bins of uh, the values where a range is provided and uh, with the plus minus outlier uh, our analysis can still be done so those kind of uh, generalization if we are doing that comes under binning category generalization we just saw where we um, provided the actual mood based upon the base location binning is uh, what i told we can provide a range of the values and rounding same as mathematical rounding rather than providing specific values we can give rounded values to plus minus nearest point based upon that uh, we can provide it further only meaning of the generalization is the outcome of actual data can be used with almost no loss and still can be used but still in our data set there is no actual value right same as here we have the mood but we don't have the actual comments so doing these things is very simple in apache spark but when to do what should we keep in mind uh, before applying these that is the whole purpose of this video so hope you got the importance of uh, data security and how with the simple straightforward methods we can implement the data security in the pi although uh, let me tell you once again like as per those policies gdpr ccpa encrypting at our record level is not a mandate but for sure it helps uh, at the company level to mask the data as much as we can and only provide uh, whatever is required and save the actual mappings in a uh, secure data lake so hope you like this video thank you guys for watching see you in my next video